Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another packing video. Uh, first thing we have going out is a car ship. It is a Monday. And since we've been back from vacation, sales have been choppy. We've had some good days and we've had some bad days since vacation is over. Although it seems to, to me things are overall trending up a little bit so we're packing on this segment anyway there'll be more typically what i've been doing is i'll do like uh i usually do like monday and tuesday on one video and wednesday thursday friday on the other and i'm, I'm producing two of those a week I think it's working out. Some of them are really, it just depends on sales how long they are. Some of them are really long. Some of them are, they range in length from like 45 minutes to two hours and 20 minutes. But yeah, I think we're starting to see like a, a little bit of a return to normal for our eBay store. All right, that's done. All right, we sold these uh, Fleer cloth sticker cards. This is kind of neat. So yeah, sales are looking like they're getting back to normal and really excited because we were able to get out there and get some fresh inventory. We do have our back stock, of course, which actually these came out of. And that is awesome to have that, but it's also nice to get out there and get some of the quote unquote good stuff. this here to slay guy it's a uh, acrylic standee thing that here to slay portion of the kickstarter game buy is just money I actually ran out of uh, 16, 12, 10 boxes the other day, and I just ordered from Zorro. There was a 20% off coupon code waiting in our inbox. Use that. Okay, we've got a couple of wrestling games here going out. 864 box. Oh, what I was saying was after 20% coupon, those 16, 12, 10 boxes that I love so much, they cost exactly a dollar a piece to the door. I don't I don't think you can beat that. 16, 12, 10 dollar a piece to the door. I bought, and, and the other good thing about that. Is that with Zorro on Granger, the more you buy, you get like a price break. And Zorro, you don't. Which, in one way, I mean, you want the price break. But in another way, the prices are already good. And since there is no price break, I don't feel compelled to buy 100 of them if I only want 50. And I only wanted 50. So... That got me the 50, the 50 count with the coupons 
was perfect because it got me to fifty dollar total order which qualified for free shipping so i was happy all right we're gonna pack this starter it's already kind of packed in there anyway We got this starter, which I guess is for like lawn, some kind of lawn equipment or something. I'm not really sure. I've never seen one of these before. But uh, we were at a yard sale. And we are we had bought a bunch of stuff. Candace spotted this in a free pile. So was pretty sweet and it's actually one of the better things we got there it's always interesting to me how when you go to garage sales the things that people value versus don't value and it's usually or a lot of times it doesn't have a whole lot to do with how much the monetary value is sometimes it does Okay, next up are these really cool, I think, anyway. As far as McDonald's toys go, these are cool. The Disneyland Paris. I'm not going to ship them like this. I don't want them to all rub together, take paint off or break or stuff like that. So I'm going to take them all out. We don't know what the circumstances of this, of these are like as far as where did you get them i don't like they're pretty they're they're not common at all in the united states at least so that kind of leads us to believe that they weren't available at united states mcdonald's unless maybe it was like a super limited time it's hard to get information about it because it was 25 years ago now since these were made Candace is kind of guessing that maybe they made them just for the McDonald's on, at the property. But who knows? It's definitely not a standard release, though, because most McDonald toys, um, there's, there's just a ton of them on eBay. So I'm using a 12, 12, 12 because we are going to be sizing it down at some point but i'm using it because uh i am going to wrap all those guys in a bubble and then put them in this box on a bed of paper in time I have 20 of these guys so I don't know if I can get maybe four four per wrap is what I'm kind of thinking we'll see how it goes let's see I wish I wish these were in separate opposite places but I don't feel like moving them all okay all right and they're actually pretty sturdy feeling little guys. Like they're not like super brittle or anything like that. No, I could. I could do. 
could do side by side. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Four, four per little bundle is good for me. Look at the detail. I think they're awesome. I think two more, two more burritos. Yep. Looking over there, we have four more after this. Okay. Sitting down to my last roll of bubble wrap too. I need to remember that. It's a huge roll though. It's not. I think that roll has like over 300 feet on it and I hadn't used a whole lot of it yet. Okay, now let's see. Still gonna allow a little room up top for a little more paper. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a good package. Happy with it. Probably about right here. We're actually after I finish packing today, we're uh seems like whenever we start sourcing sometimes we just keep keep it going. We're going to uh, pick up some stuff that we bought from an estate sale company. And the, the cool thing is, by doing so, we're getting to uh, go preview and purchase from that, that next sale. So not only are we buying some cool items, but we're also buying kind of early access. And I think they might have a bunch of really cool stuff, hopefully. But the other side of that, in that kind of spot, you're not paying half. It's gonna be full freight. So it's it's a lot like it's nice getting a preview, but uh, most things will be out of our price range for resale. Some things might not be though. Just depends on how they value it. Okay, very happy with that. Okay, we sold two lots of cookbooks here. Total of sixty. So probably be and you know what. I gotta get to got a real mess here. I gotta get to some of these. Last time we ordered poly mailers. We bought 500 of these. Pretty good price. And uh, I think this is maybe the third third bag we're going through. Okay. These are, it's gonna be kind of an interesting pack. I wish I had the 1612, not interesting, but I wish I had the 161210. I think that would be a better. Better shape box. But we're gonna make it work with some 12, uh 12 12s.
first I'm just gonna get these books in poly bags. Thinking I'm, what I might do is see if I can stand them up. Instead of packing them sitting flat on top of each other, I think maybe if I can. Let's see. I think, I think if I do two, that might give me the flexibility I need be able to stand them. Let's see. Yeah, my 16, 12, 10s are on the way, but I, I regret not having them right now. Got a couple of packs, could probably use them. And heck, if I'm getting them for a dollar, that's, that's really awesome because that's, that is what I was paying for the 12, 12, 12. The coupon makes all the difference. All right, let's see. Let me put this guy together. Let's see what we're looking like. I'm thinking stand them on end. Uh, this box is kind of wonky right here. Weird looking seam. I, I will probably take that tape that seam up when we get done. Now, my idea here is uh, just to stand them up. I just don't know. Yeah, okay, that's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, that's perfect. Probably going media mail because I think it's just past that threshold where ground advantage could possibly be cheaper, but maybe not. I'll check. I always double check. Hmm. It's probably going to be a wrap on this tube and unwrap. No? These, these paper rolls last a long time. I did want to put a nice paper base there because I am putting them and putting them in like standing on their end. been kind of watching a pack I did last week at right after we got back from vacation um, we had somebody order a big Imaginex thing y'all might have saw the pack on the channel and uh, we let them know we went back and forth on price a few times finally they agreed to pay the hundred and uh we did tell them, hey, look, it's not going to ship till we get back from vacation on this date or whatever. And um, that's when they let us know, okay, uh, do you think it'll be here for by mo the next Monday? And I was like, I think so. <laughs> I think it probably will because that, that would be like that would be like an entire week. But it was going UPS and it, it has moved slow going up to uh new york state not new york city and we've been watching the, the track all last week and disappeared for a few days probably when it was on a long haul on a big truck and as of today this is the last day that they wanted it delivered it is out for delivery so fingers crossed.
fingers crossed that both it gets there and they're happy with it because I think it's going to be uh, a gift. Oh, they said it was a birthday gift that they needed to have by tomorrow. never make guarantees or anything but when they asked me if, the, if I thought it would get there by then I'll usually tell people I think a week is probably safe but it almost wasn't okay that one's done all right y'all I was wrong uh, this is actually cheaper ground advantage 18 pounds 1447 ground advantage 1682 media mail and of course, ground advantage, you get insurance. This is going to Duluth, Minnesota, by the way. So it ain't going to be much longer to where media mail is just useless. Okay, we sold some flatware, some salad forks, and uh, this pattern made us a bunch of money. We had uh, two pieces. Of it. We had like a whole. We had a big, big lot of this stuff. And most of it, I think, is sold now. Might have just a few pieces from this line left, but we made a lot of money on this one. Not all, the, not all. Th this, is, as flatware goes, this is kind of one of the grail pieces, I guess, for resellers. And it's that particular finish and pattern and everything. It's like, what's it called, Ken? Burnished or something? Yeah. And we were fortunate in that ours was all like mint condition it wasn't scratched up or used or beat up or anything really nice condition stuff but yeah that's just salad forks fifteen dollars a fork Gee, this. all right okay this is here to slay this is the actual game itself And then we had some extras that weren't really worth selling on their own. So we just included them here. And I think I am going to go ahead and use that box. Okay. Is not delicate at all. And paying a little special attention to the areas around the box. I'm not worried about this side at all. Okay. 
yet if you ever see here to slay game stuff out there it's worth a look it may be uh pretty uncommon to find it out there in the wild though I think it's a fairly short run stuff. Okay. All right, this is when I'm kind of kicking myself for letting myself run out of these, uh, those 12, 16, 12 tens. But that's okay. We can make this work because I can look at this. This is box only, by the way. And that'll actually be a nice little fit there. Okay. I do a little resizing. Okay. Good news is, depending on which one of their facilities is coming from, we could be. I think 15 is good. Let's see. No, 15 is too tight. I need 14. This isn't gonna. Yeah, I need 14. Focus here. Let's see. Little bit of time pressure today, not so much from the carrier, but because uh want to get over to that um, preview slash pick up the items we bought slash uh, preview for that estate sale. But it's just not going to happen until I get done packing. So that's the only amount of time pressure. I mean, we just got to... I'll tell you what we bought. We bought a bunch of uh, G.I. Joe stuff. By the time this comes out, you'll probably have had a chance to see it on the Shed Flips channel. Candace spent a little time researching it and it's a lot of stuff. It's a little bit of a gamble. But if she wouldn't have done that, if she wouldn't have like pulled the trigger on buying it, we wouldn't have uh, been able to get it. I also think some of Candace's strategy on that on buying that was to get in that house too. <laughs> Is that true, Candace, or not? Yeah. Yep. She's still saving this week. I wanted to get over there before because I still. Yeah. And this is one of the we we actually have. I tell you all what, when I when I first started going to estate sales and garage sales, I didn't understand the difference between the two because all I saw was okay you go to garage sales you buy stuff you go to estate sales you buy stuff but they're they're totally different in the way you you kind of need to approach them if you're going to be doing this long term because garage sales are one-off events for the most part there are a few garage sales that we go to on a regular basis where they they source from uh, storage auctions and things like that and we you know, we have we have a uh, business relationship with some of these people and that is important but for the most part garage sales are one-off things like if we feel like we want to haggle on a price or something there's not really anything to worry about besides that day if that makes sense but when it comes to estate sales uh there's a short-term picture yeah that's fine that's good it'll be strong by the time i resize it too there's a uh 
short-term picture like well did I get a good deal today or not and then there's a longer term longer term thing to think about you know as far as your relationship with that company if that's important to you and uh, I, w I didn't think in those terms at first I'll, I'll admit I would just go in guns blazing hey will you take X for this no I won't and I was used to garage at garage sales being able to do that and estate sales it just doesn't work like that I'm a uh, I'm pretty direct and bold in uh, some of those cases and I had to learn that with estate sales you need to let the person running the estate sale uh, you really need to just let them do their thing because they're going to do it anyways <laughs> and they have a lot of people coming at them looking for deals or asking for discounts and things like that so definitely have changed the way that I deal with estate sale uh, runners and it's been well, like we've actually formed and Candace is part of that too because she's good she's better with a lot of those people than I am and they like her it also helped uh, whenever we stopped or whenever I stopped filming at estate sales that was a major issue for a while there okay We actually, uh, there's a little bit of time there where, um, and I think it might have been other shoppers. I don't, I'm not really sure. But yeah, somebody put a post up, a picture of me that they, I think they got a screenshot from, uh, they got a screenshot from like one of our videos. And they were, they posted it. Where where did they post that, Candace? They posted it on their Facebook page, but it was public and oh, that's right, and they tagged me. They tagged and they a bunch of estate sale companies were tagged or got involved or, right. or something. It was somebody that worked for an estate sale company. Right. I don't remember which one, but yeah, there was a lot of comments and um, people. I was being called a pervert. Yeah. With or a camera and pervert or case in the joint to come back and rob it. Right. Just all kind of negative stuff. Right. Yeah. And and that I never really talked about that. And I'm not gonna go too far into that, but I I mean I'd certainly like I can certainly see their viewpoints on that. And the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? It, that really like they were out of line in a lot of ways, but the one thing that I did agree with, I was like, you know what? That really is kind of creepy for someone to just walk, walk into a house wearing a camera and not ask permission or nothing. Cause I didn't probably because I figured they wouldn't, they wouldn't grant it. Maybe they would have, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I didn't like that. I didn't like. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. And I, I did agree with with some of what they were saying, as far as being filmed. It wasn't illegal. Well, there could there could there could be some potential uh, potential image likeness not getting released, things like that. But as far as filming, it's not. Let me get the next package. Very cool car here. Um, wouldn't you know i have another pack this one i got plenty of room on this one and i need it too uh, I, I have another one here where i wish i had my 16 12 10 but i don't but yeah uh that was a that was kind of a tough time i didn't talk about it because i didn't want to but uh yeah that was a little bit of a difficult time because i had to like i was struggling the people want to see the live shopping stuff and those videos do awesome they really do 
even now they still do i think 15 and a half is the number but it got it got like after that post had been made um i went to an estate sale the next weekend and i was filming and bought some stuff the lady's acting weird at the checkout but i, I pay her and i'm waiting for candace candace is still looking around go out to the car that lady gets up from the the checkout she gets her phone and i'm just like standing by the car outside and she's got her cell phone like in my face recording me and I, I, I'm like, hey, uh, what, what are you doing? You know, I'm asking her, like, why are you filming me? I didn't tell her not to film me. I just asked her why. She didn't say a word, say anything. She just kept filming me. She went around to the car. I was in a car that day, not the truck. She went around to the back of the car. She, like, got close up to the license plate and stuff. And I didn't realize it at the time, but some estate sale had, um, some estate sale like on they had a state sale friday and then overnight it got somebody broke in and stole a bunch of stuff and in that thread i was talking about people brought up brought me up as like oh he's probably casing the place casing the joint to see what's what's worth what's worth stealing or not blah 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 bunch of, bunch of like that that was the nonsense part because like it, estate sales are estate sales are public like why would someone with someone that's casing a place to go steal from it later would they actually would, would they actually wear a gopro on the go in the day before and wear a gopro that everyone could see and what would even be the point of that? I don't even understand. But so anyways, had a contentious relationship with a few estate sale companies around that time. Because they thought I was some really dastardly guy or something. And uh, not too much longer after that is when I was like, I'm like, you know what? When we go to... When I go to estate sales and garage sales, I just don't, I'm not going to film anymore. It's not, it's not worth the anxiety, etc. And I, let me tell y'all, like, that, that decision, it costs a lot of money. Because those, those videos, if you look, if you look on YouTube, garage sale videos, that's where all the money's at in this space. Like you can make you can make some decent money like doing like the kind of videos we do if you have a you know if you have a decent following like I, I think we do we have a pretty good following but the real money is in those those live shopping videos and uh, at that point I just like you know what I'm done with it it's like I I, I understand their points some of some of the points these people are making and they're right it is kind of creepy it is kind of weird and at garage sales it's usually women and children there and I decided then that that was it and haven't filmed again since uh, like we may do a clip every now and then but it's gonna be like real tight just on an item or something maybe uh, or if we get you know permission at a private buy film there but yeah it got really weird and actually since then we've developed some really good relationships with several of these companies um, not all not all the local companies were like oh that guy's terrible I might I might be overstating that some but yeah that's just you know there, there's there are reasons <laughs> there are reasons that you know we don't we don't do that kind of content anymore it certainly isn't because they're not financially worth it because man they were they were the best uh, let me see i'm gonna figure out my resize height first 
But yeah, all that to say, uh, make forming good relationships with estate sale companies can pay off big time. So that doesn't mean to go around overpaying for everything, but don't like don't make every interaction you have with the estate sale company owner or, or the employees. Don't make every single interaction you asking for something from them. Hey, can I get this off or that off or whatever? And I have noticed a lot of them are uh, becoming more and more, or maybe I'm just noticing it. They're becoming more and more appreciative of the reseller because that's the people, resellers, honestly, that's the people that are helping them clear these houses out. General public buys a ton at these sales too, don't get me wrong. But resellers are the ones that move mass quantity of stuff. And resellers are the ones that have the money in their pockets and ready to spend it. Collectors or people that are just buying stuff for you know private use, they are willing to pay more. So there is a there is a balancing act. those companies have to have to do and I, I totally get that because ultimately they are or at least they should be working for their clients but sometimes working for your client means taking a little less and getting rid of stuff you know sometimes it means holding strong and getting the top dollar All right. But um, I would say in general, or, or I would say just about every time, whether you should let someone know you're a reseller or not, it's maybe, maybe not when it comes to garage sales. You have to feel that out for yourself because some people don't want to see anyone making a dime off of their stuff and a lot of people really don't care and they you might get access to more stuff that way but you have to but you have to feel that out see if it's a good see if they'll handle it well that you're a reseller and you're, you're just buying their stuff to make a profit so I've seen that go both ways. But when it comes to estate sale companies, uh, these are people that are in business themselves making money off of selling stuff. Not their stuff necessarily, but they will be more uh, accepting of that. And they also will know that you are potentially someone that can help them move some stuff. So I would always let estate sale companies know you're a reseller. And they'll understand why you're never willing to pay full retail for stuff either. That one's done. All right, got some uh, cloud cats here. I'm gonna use a six four four. But yeah, uh, here at the end when I was filming at sales, um, it got to the point where there's so much anxiety, and it's actually a lot of work to filming. My camera on is my camera charged is is this uh is this angle right all that kind of stuff oh are they watching me do they care that i'm filming are they cool with it do they think i'm a creep all these thoughts and Whenever we, whenever I quit filming at sales, I started having a lot of fun going to garage sales again. It was much more chill. And it actually got to the point where I kind of dreaded going out because of the filming. So, and now, it's just fun and relaxing. Never say never, I guess, but uh, 
I think there's a pretty good chance I'm never going to go back to filming at sales again. There's, there's so much of that content out there anyway now that's done i have three of these star wars hot wheels all in one lot two robot looking dudes and ray and we're going to use a 1086 box I'm trying to remember the last thing i said i don't know Oh, but yeah, they, I mean, like, there, there are so many people now doing, like, uh, shopping at garage sales or shopping at thrift stores, etc. Kind of footage now that, uh, that, although it would still, like, it would still get great views on our channel, too, if we did it. Um, that is a, a well-served segment of of this uh, genre. So, not really, wouldn't really be bringing anything new to the table. Um, you know, like I, like the, the packing videos, I know that it's a niche kind of thing as far as people that would be interested in that, but I do feel like we're bringing something new to the, the space that isn't getting done a lot which adds value to the space. There is something to that. It's not all about just what we get, you know? It is also about, uh, I love sharing info. I like being like a, a, a teacher type sometimes. And that is a spot, like packing stuff, nobody shows packing <laughs> very well uh, very rarely does anyone like to show packing there was a time when i wasn't probably confident well definitely wasn't confident enough to make these videos like the only way you can make these kind of videos is if you are fairly confident with yourself and aren't like looking for um affirmation that you're doing a good enough job you have to know you're doing a good enough job before you before you do something like this because it's just a fact that you will you will get picked apart from time to time sometimes deservedly and sometimes not but it's going to happen so Not everybody wants to wants that heat. That's done. Okay, packing this car here. Did have a request for a story um, from Josh Graff. He does have a YouTube channel. I actually watch his channel occasionally. I don't watch much reseller content. But I, I do watch Josh from time to time, and he is, uh, he's real. Like, he doesn't sugarcoat stuff. He, I, I, like, I appreciate, I trust someone much more whenever they, whenever they're mentioning uh, failings and things like that, or things they didn't know, or whatever. Uh, and not, not to say, I guess I'm, I'm probably painting a poor image. But he's just real. Well, he, he knows a lot about reselling. He's good at it, but he's like also he's very he's very real about like mistakes that he makes versus you know thing, he, we all have we all make mistakes, and he's willing to acknowledge this, which I think I think is a good thing. But uh, yeah, Josh asked. I got to show you all this. I'm I'm getting ready for the next pack. Candace is over here, <laughs> listening to Joe, GI Joe Vintage. This kind has flocked head. 
Yes. And what she's doing, I guess, you're protecting the flocking. Yeah, because I'm going to put him in a little plastic clear baggie, but um, I don't want his flocking like rubbing on that plastic. J so. This Is this a POW, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Looking. It's nuts. He looks like a hostage. Yeah. All right. We sold a Dream Cheeky USB missile launcher. This thing actually looks kind of neat. I think this 1086 box is perfect. Oh, uh, Josh... Josh, go check out his channel. I, I, I enjoy it. He's real. That's what I like about him. And he's knowledgeable. Didn't, did not mean to imply he wasn't knowledgeable. I just, I just mean that he's honest and just real. Because like oh, some, some YouTubers I watch, it's like everything is good all the time and there are never any mistakes, mistakes made. And I know that's not, that's not real. <laughs> just not possible but yeah josh asked uh or requested for this the story about wayne and uh i don't know do i want to get into it now okay i will i was actually going to say i'll do it in the next video but why not we're here packing let's do it so wayne well let me let me backtrack this is probably four years ago now because it was before Candace was working in here okay and at that time I was doing very similar to what we do now as far as the vlogs go which show what sold which show what was what's coming in which show some garage sale footage you know like it was basically the same thing one big difference is Whenever a viewer would buy something and they would put a note there, I'd give them a little shout out because I appreciated their business. And I, and, and I do, and I did. Okay, okay. But what happened was with this one particular guy, sold this Monopoly car here. This one particular guy, his name is Wayne. And it, I, I'm going to attempt not to give any, like, personally identifiable information. But before I start this story, uh, this is past tense. And if you feel, if you feel after hearing this story, like you, you want to reach out to him and tell him something or whatever, please don't. Because he hadn't bothered me for a pretty good while now. And I don't really, I honestly do not have any hard feelings towards the guy. I think he's troubled. And just, you know, if you do, if you are some kind of super sleuth, please leave him alone. It's fine. So anyways, Wayne. Wayne started out, he would buy like a, a one thing every now and then. And then I would I would thank him on, on a video. I'd say, okay, Wayne bought, you know, got an order from Wayne, he bought this, he bought that. And then slowly, uh, the n amount of things Wayne would buy would go up, 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 up. And it, it got to, it, it almost became like, and it got really weird because like the videos I was making Maybe we sell, sold uh, 25 items that day. Sales were a little brisker back then, too. Sold 25 items that day, and Wayne might have bought five of them. And it was like that. Uh, like, it would be like two or three times a week. He was buying, buying, buying just a ton of stuff. And at first it was awesome because like we're here to make sales and viewer sales are certainly a part of that. There's no doubt. We have quite a few uh, long time awesome customers. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely part of the equation for us, right? But Wayne got to the point where he was buying so much, it really got me a little concerned. And actually, I reached out to him a few times. Well, just to give an example, uh, 
at one point we had probably 20 Bibles. Most of them like being, like there was a time when I first started buying Bibles that I pretty much, and this happened a lot, I pretty much didn't discriminate. I would just buy Bibles. And after a while I learned that, okay, not all Bibles should you be buying. You should be definitely way more picky. But before that happened, we had amassed probably like 20, 25 Bibles. They were on the shelf, low, lower value Bibles, eight to $12 kind of stuff. And uh, one morning I wake up, Wayne had bought all the Bibles, every one of them. Said something, he, and he had a message with it, said something about he was gonna collect them or something. I'm like, okay. So of course, and, and the, the videos kind of became a running joke about Wayne buying everything. And I didn't like that, but I was already in it. I didn't know how to stop it. I wanted the sales, but at that point, I wish I, I was kind of wishing, it was, it, it, he had kind of taken over the channel to an extent. That's how much he was buying. I don't know how to, I don't think it can be overstated. There was a couple of month period where he was buying so much. It just got really weird. And like another time, um, he bought, we had like a bunch of uh, car repair manuals. I bought a, like a big lot of them. Probably, again, probably had about 20 of them or so. so yeah, that's good. Probably had about 20 of them or so. And yeah, he bought every one of them. Called it a collection. All different cars, of course. Random cars, make some models. And it, it was like that with several other things. And I, don't get me wrong, we did really well selling that stuff. But, uh, oh, another wrinkle to the story. This is, this is where it gets really weird. I, I, was, I talked to Ryan and Justin. Ryan from Thrift Mine. Also from Crazy Dreamers YouTube channels. And uh, Ryan's like, man, that guy's really buying a lot. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, he's, it's kind of already looked at that. Hang on, be right back. And I was talking to Ryan and Justin about it. Actually, quite a few times. And finally, I was like, man, this guy is really starting to worry me just based on what he's buying and how much he's buying. I'm like, I'm really kind of starting to get concerned. And what I was really concerned about, y'all, was, uh, like, at that point, he'd been buying maybe a month or something. And I was like, man, and I had I had return, free returns or returns. I don't remember which one I was using at that point. But I was like, man, what if, if I make him, if he gets mad, and he just opens a return on everything. That would be like, that would be horrible. And I, that was in the back of my mind. It was, because we're probably, I don't even know, it's probably like a hundred items in a month, something like that. So as I often did, whenever I was worried about something or whatever, I had, you know, Ryan and Justin to bounce things off of. As they understood a lot of the reselling stuff and a lot of the YouTube stuff because they are both YouTubers as well. Uh, and so Ryan looked the guy up and I had never done that. Ryan looked the guy up and he found him. How did he find him? He found him from a report from about, I don't know, it wasn't that long, maybe six months prior. Uh, he had been arrested for phoning in a threat to uh, shoot up an entire retail store. Threat of, of mass violence, mass shooting threat. And uh, obviously the police responded and I, I think I think what ended up happening. I don't want to give too many details. 
but I think what ended up happening, I, I think it was kind of concluded that uh, it wasn't a, a genuine uh, threat they were going to carry out, but I think they did kind of determine that he was uh, had some mental health issues. I, I don't know. I don't know all the ins and outs. I don't know. I don't know why he didn't do time or anything. I really don't. So now, now I know this guy is a potential. Potentially, I already knew he had some issues. But now, now it got a little more serious because he's threatened something like that. And I know about it. Glad I knew about it because it, like, it, it did, it did make me a little more concerned. Uh, and it made me want to be more careful with the way I handled him. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to say, look, Wayne. Uh, I really appreciate your business that you've given us, uh, I, but I think you really have got to stop buying. I, that's where I was at with him. Because I was like, man, this is just a problem, you know? And at that point, uh, I, I, I didn't even want to sell to him anymore. I wanted him to stop buying. But then at that point, I was like, man... This is not somebody that I want to make mad. I really don't. So, I didn't disclose to him that I knew that information. And I didn't want to, like, trigger him in any way at all. And I, I for, So, for about the next month, a month or so, it probably went on the same way. So, I... I was very careful with him and but I did eventually work up the nerve I was I was scared of him honestly I did work up the nerve I was like look man I, I, I'm really concerned about the amount you're buying from us from me this can't like I said Candace is not working in here yet um, and we I got to the point where I was like okay um, how, how about if you, you just buy like one thing a week and he's like okay that, that that's fine if you're worried that's fine I could do that and so he did that and then but like the second week even he was like hey look uh, I just really want that X thing that whatever, whatever it is that I saw uh, can I please just buy it and and then eventually it was funny, like it went on like that for a little while. But once I expressed that I had like some issues with the way he was, his, with his behavior to him. So we're going to pack this uh, big game here. This is from the uh, Kickstarter game by. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it, I'm going to do a, a pre-wrap here. With cardboard and then I'm gonna resize the 16 16 16 as the outer shipping box and it's gonna be it's gonna be the box is gonna be tight this thing is heavy so I'm gonna do like an inner box in box and uh, uh let me get back to Wayne so after I it had expressed some concern about his buying to him Definitely his tone kind of changed. He didn't like to hear that, I don't think. And I, I, I really didn't like saying it either, especially knowing what I knew. I didn't know if he was dangerous or what. So, it was kind of tense. And over the next couple of weeks, his buying faded. And then he just kind of disappeared. He just went away. And I stopped hearing from him. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if maybe, maybe he, I didn't know if maybe he got locked up or something. I didn't know, didn't know anything about it. Until like, probably about a month after that. Come out here to the shed. Getting ready to start my work day. And I look at my email. And at this point, wasn't using eBay managed payments to get paid. 
everything was going through PayPal. Let me get a box. Okay, I'm gonna go both ways with this. I think I'll need three panels at least. Yeah, yeah three panels. Three panels to go around it in that direction. So yeah, he. Uh, I, I came out here to work and uh, I had a bunch of alerts on PayPal. I dug into it and turns out I had, I was 18, 18, right? Yeah, 18. Someone had opened like, I don't remember how many it was. It was like, it, it, it was it, it was probably almost everything he had ever bought from from us he opened up chargebacks on or some there were chargebacks on everything uh we had sold or most of it anyway probably not everything and it, it was just a mass amount of chargebacks it was like 50 something of them and i i did I, I was kind of concerned that day was coming and it it came chargebacks like just chargeback hell and it was like it, it, the total amount of the chargebacks was somewhere between twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars and i got i was so fortunate because I called, I called eBay, I'm uh, not eBay, I called PayPal. And I got like a really good rep on the phone. I was very, very lucky. I got a really good rep on the phone and I said, hey, do you have a minute before we get started? Because I, I, I gotta give you some backstory here so this makes sense. Because I want you to understand you know what what I'm dealing with here and uh, he was like sure and I told him I gave him like a much shorter version of the story than I'm giving y'all and uh, he was just <laughs> I think he, I think he appreciated the story and I was like you know I'm on YouTube the channels here blah 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 like I told I gave it all to him and I was fortunate he understood what happened he believed me um, and I was on the phone with that guy for probably over an hour and I had all my ducks in a row as far as like uh, tracking numbers and orders and all that stuff. Before I called, I got all that stuff ready to go. And uh, that guy from PayPal was on the phone with me for over an hour and he put in answers to every single chargeback that had been filed and fought every one of them and it wasn't too too whoops it wasn't too too long before i got word that all of them every single one of them uh, was found in my favor and got to keep all the money. Nothing happened to, to me at all on that. And uh, yeah, and so what I what I assumed happened. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm good with this. I'm not. I don't feel like I need to do these ends. Let me get a box. Okay, I went and got a 16 cube box. Let's see. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm not sure it's going to be suitable. May not be. Let's see. Can I roll it? Yes. Actually, it, <laughs> actually, it's 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 suitable. It's good. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good right there. So, uh, where am I at here? All the chargebacks got taken care of. Thank goodness. I mean, it was. I, it, it wouldn't have been completely catastrophic, but man, it would have hurt. 
Wait, man, I forgot the number. That's how bad my memory is. See, I had a number in my head. 18 and a half. Okay. And uh, I also sent a message to him on eBay. And I said, look, I don't know what the deal is. Oh, I, I had a I had strong suspicion that he had probably been using like his mother's uh, credit card or something like that to make all the purchases. And I think it finally caught up. She got started getting the bills and freaked out and charged it all back. And I don't blame her for that if that's, if that's what happened. I did know that he lived with his mother. I'd done some investigation. And uh, I, I reached out to him and I said, look, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know why you did all those chargebacks. I don't know why, why, why you tried to steal from me. I said, it really doesn't matter because fought the chargebacks, won every single one of them. But here's what I want from you. I want you to never buy anything from me again. I don't want you to ever message me again. I don't want to hear from you at all again. After you tried to steal all that stuff from me. And that's how I approached it. I, and, and look, I, I, I knew that that wasn't what he was doing. I don't think, I think he, he I think he was just uh, mentally ill. And he, he really liked the channel and really liked us and really liked me and liked hearing me like shout him out and this and that. And, you know, I don't think he had, I don't think he started with any kind of ill will or, you know, was trying to, to hurt, hurt me in some way or, you know, take our money or take our product. I don't think it was a scam situation, but... I didn't ever want to hear from the guy again. I told him such. And then he, he came back and replied saying something about some bank error or blah, blah, blah. I don't, it was a BS. It was a BS excuse for why the chargebacks happened. And I repeated the same thing. I'm like, that's, that's well and good. It's over. Just please don't 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 contact us again. Don't buy again. I, and yes, I did. I did block his account. And over the next, I'd say, year or so, every now and then, turn these corners down. Every now and then, I would get a message on eBay. And it would say the town the message was coming from. And it would be a different account every time. But it always had the town. And I knew the town. And I knew the way he talked. And I knew it was him. And he would, he would ask some question about some item. Probably trying to feel me out to see if I figured out figured it was him or not. And I did every time. Let's switch this tape out. I need new tape. And I would say, look, Wayne, I know it's you. I know it's you. And, you know, you, what, what you're doing is against eBay policy. You're not, you're not allowed to make a new account and to circumvent a block. It's actually against policy, and it is. I said, please, please, leave, leave me alone. I said, I, I'm not mad, I'm not angry, I don't hate you, anything like that. But after what you did, that's it. I can't, can't have that again. And he did this about over a year's time. He did this from probably three different accounts. But it always had the name of the, the city, the town. And it was so obvious, just the way, the, the kind of words he used and whatnot. And then, uh, eventually, never heard from him again. 
and it's been like that uh been like that for a while now i don't think i've heard anything from wayne in a couple of years and i hope i don't again i also hope that he's good and he got whatever help he needed and then he didn't hurt anybody or any of that so that is the story of Wayne but I, I just remember I just remember Ryan when he asked me he said uh, he said hey Lonnie what's that guy's name where does he live I, I don't give that kind of information out usually to anybody but of course Ryan is one of my best friends still is and uh, I gave it to him and then about 10 minutes later he's he's in the messages again uh Lonnie have you have you googled this guy before and as soon as he said that I was like oh no that's not a good that's not a good sign that Ryan's asking that question and I'm like uh no why 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 do you say that and then he dropped a link there were a bunch of news stories about it and stuff it was whew. oh man so yeah that's the story of Wayne and uh that's sometimes you deal with that kind of thing sometimes you deal with that kind of thing when you're on YouTube I've had a few other things few other people had some weird stuff but nothing nothing like that nothing like Wayne and, and again I, I've never I still to this day I, and he never I don't think he had I, I don't think he had bad intentions or anything I think the opposite I think he liked me a lot liked hearing his name and all that stuff and but uh yeah he was basically he was probably stealing a family member's money to make all this purchases so yeah <laughs> i didn't know how long that was going to take and also it's been a little while since i've talked about it so uh as i was or even thought about it so as I was telling that story I was like man that's even crazier than I remembered for, for me to say it out loud it made it more real somehow Whew. but yeah and Wayne if you happen to be watching this I don't think he is but you never know you might still watch every single video. I don't know. If you're watching this, I truly, I truly mean no ill will, and not just because, not just because you threatened to shoot up an entire large retail store. Although that is a factor, but also. Like in my most of my communications with you, you seem like a nice enough guy that just had some issues. And I hope you've worked through those. I hope you've worked through those. We all have tough patches. Oh, man. That's the dark side of YouTube. So, gotten a little more reserved about about YouTube and what things that, uh, we do. We do talk about our personal lives a pretty good bit, but like we don't try and go into too much detail with like our family and stuff like that. Children, mention them, show them every now and then, you know, but. For the most part, try and keep those two worlds separate. Okay, this, I'm very, I'm happy with that pack. 
and that's all we're going to be doing for today but not for this video see y'all soon all right hello everyone we're back for the second and final day we're packing battle of Westeros. and this is actually this is fine just like this i think not a whole lot moving around in there uh we're just going to use a 12 12 12 for that and a little bubble 12 12 12 will be a little snug but i think it's appropriate box size by the time we resize it down it'll be it'll be pretty strong i think I don't have any grand stories to tell today, I don't think. Something might come up. It's kind of hard to follow the whole Wayne thing. It's hard to beat. Let's see, it's pretty tight there. Mm. Yeah, this is good. I do want to see... Grab me a knife here. Do you want to see how much flap I need to cut off? I'm just going to keep this box nice and tight. Yeah. So let's see how far these reach. Oh yeah, those reach over. We sold a knife and uh, this thing is pretty long especially with the uh, cardboard stuff on there so we're gonna do a quick resize so. much to it let's do it at like uh, 15 and a half I already checked the weight. We estimated of 15 ounce shipping weight, and this is definitely going to be that.
like to kind of cut these even if it doesn't cut all the way through it helps helps you fold it a lot easier all right take a bunch of uh To this flap off like a bunch because I don't have a whole lot of room to fold here. Let's see. Yeah. Something like that. Quick weight check. I mean, it should be good, but oh yeah, Ooh, perfect. Here are those perforations, and we're good to go. Salt some moose. A little while back we bought uh, a chest set that was missing I think like six pieces and uh, we only paid ten dollars these are two of the pieces I think we've sold five total now 
It's a uh, Danbury Mint or it's one of those kind of companies. I don't remember what it was. But we did see the receipt. The, the people originally paid quite a bit. Quite a bit because they charged... They would, let's see, I could see the company on the bottom, I think. No, it doesn't say the company on the bottom. Hmm. It'll say it in the thumbnail, so y'all will know. Don't remember if it's, uh, it might have been Franklin Mint. Franklin or Danbury Mint? Not sure which. Yeah, we, we saw this on the way out of the sale. We almost missed it. And it was like the best thing there. When you add it all up. It's one of those things where no one sale. You know, like a no one $20 sale is going to seem like that much. But then when your bucket of chess pieces is empty, you made $500. You know, it's one of those kind of things. We've had a lot of those kind of things where we have like 20 or 30 or something and it doesn't seem like much money to you add it all up. Uh, picked up some of these Nordic wear pans. This was a good one. She actually has this one and she's even put in a, um, a recipe. She's actually made these quite a few times. And they're good. So I, I can vouch for that. Let's see. Get all this stuff together. I'm just going to do a 12 12 12. It is, uh, I measured the pan, it's about 11 inches diameter, something like that. So, it'll fit fine in here. And it's not that delicate either. But it's, uh, things are thick and heavy. I do think this will be low enough though to wear. Probably just cut the flaps out and put put a couple of them into the bottom again. Okay, let me see how high I want to make this. Keep it pretty pretty low. I'll put a little paper around it. There. This is a higher value one of these. Don't need much room. in my extra flap stash these days. And I'm tempted just to go ahead and use all of this in here on the bottom. The top is going to be like, because these flaps go over so far, it's going to be super strong up there anyway.
really nice fit there. Okay, we have a G.I. Joe here, and yeah, he is bagged, and also his head is, looks like a hostage. Uh, that's kind of necessary. Let me make sure it's going to, yeah, I'll fit fine, Dagon. That's necessary because he's got a uh, flocked, his hair, his hair is flocked, and this, on this one, it's in really good condition, so trying to protect it. We picked this up at a garage sale, I believe on Saturday. guys are pretty tall 12 inch Also sold. We had, I think she made. Candace made three listings out of that. This guy is sold for forty-five. He had a helmet with him. Is she listed for fifty-five? And then we actually just now. They're probably not going out today. Probably out tomorrow. Just now sold like his uh, coat and something else for 20. Oh, and she also has another piece listed for 17. This ended up being a really good buy. Sold these little uh, sunscreens. 100 SPF, I think. Yeah, 100 SPF. garage sale had a bunch of these little uh, the small smaller sizes of stuff in it wasn't a huge profit per uh, thing I think we paid two dollars for those I think selling for ten but I think we got like six of those uh, kind of like little baggies and we have a couple of alien figs reaction which are they're basically like reissues or the reaction figs are just made they're modern they make the packaging to look kind of retro they're, they're actually kind of cool I think I'll just put a little paper in there with this I'll resize it a little bit Uh, 
not a whole lot. These have been listed a long time. I don't know, I don't, eh, probably at least, probably about six months or so. Not that long. Not like years. Okay, that's done. All right, we're gonna do a few Macari things here. Macari's waking back up. It was super slow when we first came back off of vacation. Super slow. It was, it was basically dead. And now it seems like it's coming back. These little smaller gloves, they, they aren't worth a ton, as I can see, but uh, pick them up pretty, fairly regularly, regularly, and they're in, they're usually in pretty good shape. So, I don't, it's enough for me, I think, I think it's worth it. Usually you can pick them up for like a dollar or two. That one's done. Okay, we sold some uh, Mary Kay Satin Hands. We use a This happens a lot. We've got one more label to print today. The label printer just ran out. I think these rolls have like 240 labels on them. Something like that. It's not too hard to swap this out. I've, I've had this printer for, I don't know, it must be about six years now. Five, six years. Did I unplug it? Oh, I did. I was wondering why it didn't auto feed. I don't know, I got a bad angle. Take that back out. That's the only thing you gotta watch out for is that angle. That's not gonna do it now. Usually the paper swaps are really smooth. Whenever I reset it like that, I'll unplug it and then I'll keep pressing that button until it goes out.
Okay. But yeah, I've had that thing for, I, th I want to say it's about six years. It's probably printed 40,000 labels or something stupid. I don't know. It's been a lot. been a lot oh, I gotta write up a thank you note figure out who this is going to so we have a uh, lens case and a dog shirt combo on Macari just in a little bundle deal more or less more or less they're buying this is the way we look at it anyway i don't know how they look at it more or less they're buying the lens case and we're throwing in a dog t-shirt which we have uh two into the two dollars into this one dollar into this so we're good we are good either way happy to take that deal Eight six do the job. Let me get a look at this order so I can put their uh put their name on the thank you card. Okay, you know this is uh about as straightforward as it gets. Both of these things are not fragile at all. We do have a, I forgot, we have one more thing. Forgot about the Etsy order. Okay, one more thing. A little shoe for Topper Dawn doll. Just bought an amazing Topper Dawn collection on Facebook Marketplace. One of the dolls sold for like huge money. I mean, what was the most expensive doll in that collection, Candace? Um, Pilot Gary, I think was his name. It was a guy doll. Yeah, do you remember about how much I it was? Don't, but I can look. Yeah, look at it. Look that up. I'm curious because there was a lot. So she, so she had a bunch of dolls. It sold really well, and then also she had a lot of uh, extra accessories and stuff. This is one of those. The bulk of that purchase, it was it must have been a, close to a year ago. But the bulk of that purchase uh, is long sold. We just have a few little pieces here and there. All right, this is all done, and Candace looked it up. The Topper Dawn doll she, that I was talking about, or she was talking about, $250. <laughs> you see they bought that and a couple other dolls and we sold a bunch of other topper dawn stuff but that's going to be it for this one thanks a bunch for watching and i will see y'all again very soon bye y'all